time for today's headliner. Michael Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis, making his first appearance on Fox News Channel since he began representing the president's former lawyer. Lanny Davis, good morning to you. But an old veteran of Fox News, so. Yeah, good morning, Lanny. How are you? I'm back. Nice good to morning. see you this morning. So first off, I'll ask the question a lot of people are wondering at this moment, and that is, will your client cooperate with Robert Mueller? Well, the answer is he will cooperate with everyone because he's committed to telling the truth. Uh, that's a general statement. I can't give you a specific answer regarding Mr. Mueller or anyone else, but I know that when he retained me, and as recently as yesterday, he's committed to telling the truth. And we've actually set up a website with the name Truth in it called MichaelCohnTruth.com, and he's looking for help uh, from people who want to give donations to help him uh, tell the truth. When you say he wants to tell the truth, does your client know anything about alleged Russian collusion? Is your client willing to testify about anything that Donald Trump told him as a candidate about alleged Russian collusion? Will he testify about any actions that the president may or may not have taken concerning the Russians? Well, I know you're doing your job, and you won't be surprised to know that I'm not going to answer a question until Mr. Mueller is finished with his investigation, and we'll leave it up to uh, Mr. Mueller and other investigation bodies before we tell people ahead of time. But does I does can he have tell any you, of that type of information? He was very I, close I, to Donald Trump. Uh, I've been in the office in Trump Tower with both of them. Uh, the, the president would say he'd be squealing, and he has said he's made up stories. Did your client make up stories about the president? Uh, I don't believe so, but this is the same president who called John Dean, one of the iconic heroes uh, from the Nixon Watergate criminal conspiracy that caused Richard Nixon to resign, and John Dean uh, was uh, a, a convicted felon. And he called John Dean, in all caps, a rat. That's the nature of the man that is sitting in the White House, so I wouldn't take too seriously his reaction to Michael Cohen deciding to step up to the line and take responsibility and under oath describe that what he did, he did at the direction and uh, with the coordination of the president, meaning that his crime was the president's Mr. crime. Mr. Davis, uh, since the outcome yesterday, you have gone on other television networks and you've said and gone a bit beyond what you're telling us now, saying that Cohen's knowledge reached beyond the, quote, obvious possibility of a conspiracy to collude and included information on whether Trump participated in a, quote, criminal conspiracy to hack into the emails of Democratic officials during the 2016 election. What yes, I did, I did say possibility, and possibility isn't a fact. It's my judgment and observation uh, that there is that possibility, and he'll have to leave the specifics as to whether or not that possibility becomes stronger than possibility up to Mr. Mueller or whoever's Questioning. Mr. Davis, uh, your client once said he would take a bullet for this president. What right. changed? It's a great question, and it was my, one of my first questions when he called me, because I was not interested in representing him if he were defending Donald Trump, as he had previously done for so many years. Uh, we talked uh, at length about what had changed his mind about Donald Trump to the point where he now was ready to say, I'm hitting the reset button, and I'm now going to tell the, tru the truth about Donald Trump. And that was the beginning of my decision to represent him. I think you have seen in the first interview with George Stephanopoulos some very specific principles that he is on the opposite side of Donald Trump. He mentioned, for example, his respect for the FBI. He mentioned his respect for the intelligence community, unanimous judgment, including Donald Trump's own director of national Intelli intelligence, that the Russians interfered on Mr. Trump's behalf in what is the functional equivalent of corrupting our democracy. And only one person is left who denies his own intelligence community's unanimous judgment, who stood publicly at Helsinki, which was a major turning point for Michael Cohen, and sided with Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence community. So. There have been a number of incidents that I believe have been influential on Mr. Cohen. So you're saying that he changed his mind and his thinking on the president over an act of no, patriotism? Uh, no question 
most Americans, according to the polls, were concerned. But just talking about what Michael Cohen Mr. here, and here's here's well, you just and, you just said uh, an act of patriotism, and yes, Michael Cohen was offended, as were most Americans, by Donald Trump standing up and aligning himself with Putin against his own intelligence community. I want to make sure we get in, I want to make sure we get in the president's words this morning because he just tweeted this, Mr. Davis. Michael Cohen pled guilty to two counts of campaign finance violations that are not a crime. President Obama had a big campaign finance violation and it was easily settled. How do you respond to that? So interesting when Donald Trump admits something by saying the opposite. So by saying it's not a crime, which the law says if you give money to influence an election beyond the campaign finance limits, that's a felony. And Michael Cohn, with the prosecutors, stood up under oath in federal court and admitted to that crime and said he did it at the direction and coordination with the prosecutor's language there that he agreed to. And Donald Trump is disagreeing with the prosecutors with uh, Mr. Cohen's description of this as a crime, the same way he disagrees with the entire intelligence community, not one dissenter in his own administration. So when Rudy Giuliani says truth is in truth, you just heard Donald Trump reverse truth and make it into a falsehood. It's a classic. Well, in court classic. yesterday, your, your client said that he was directed by uh, candidate number one, basically, uh, then candidate Trump, to make this uh, illegal contribution. Uh, it is under Department of Justice guidelines, and Mr. Mueller has said that a sitting president cannot be indicted. Does Michael Cohen and do you believe that Donald Trump committed a federal crime, and if he were not the sitting president of the United States, that he would be indicted right now? Well, there's no question that he's committed a federal crime, and whether he can be indicted has never been decided. I see no quotation from Mr. Mueller. I see a attribution anonymously, but uh, there were two opinions of the Office of Legal Counsel many years ago. The Supreme Court has never ruled. I think there is a traditional view that you don't indict sitting presidents, but that's an unsettled question. Well, obviously, question. obviously, Mr. Davis, there there is a question of whether or not he committed a federal crime that is that that does not exist today. I want I want to ask you though. Excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there is no question. You said that there's the no campaign, question. Right, and there's no question that money given beyond limits. For the purpose, as it was said yesterday by the prosecutors okay, so, in the back, Southern District, okay. So, go back to that. Go back to what happened in that act. courtroom and tell us exactly what is your client saying that Trump directed him to do? What specifically? So, let's say what is the government saying that Michael Cohen agreed with and restated under oath is that at the direction and the coordination of the President of the United States, Donald Trump, named candidate that the donations given to keep quiet to women, which Mr. Trump wasn't willing to sign those checks himself, he directed Mr. Cohen to make those hush money payments, is a federal crime. And if Michael Cohen, with the prosecutors in New York agreeing, admitted to that, then certainly Donald Trump is guilty of the same crime. You know, Lana, you've been a longtime Clinton advisor and a, and a lawyer for Hillary Clinton and, and close to Bill and Hillary Clinton. What do you say to those who say that there should be a special counsel investigating the Clintons, the DNC, the Darcier, Christopher Steele, and the way this was handled by the Department of Justice and the FBI uh, officials, some of whom have been fired and certainly uh, showed a, a, a distaste for Donald Trump becoming president of the United States? First of all, you didn't state a single fact involving the Clintons. And although I have a lot of friends at Fox and have been a Fox guest on almost every show on Fox, that kind of rhetoric without facts is unfortunately too common uh, on Fox shows. So state me facts of what Bill or Hillary Clinton actually have done that would suggest anything illegal suggesting a special counsel. Well, my, my question is respond. your reaction to those who have called for that. There, there are pure political speculation, rhetoric, but no facts. That's have you talked reaction. to your client this morning, Mr. Davis? I have. I have. Did you want to share anything with us? Well, he's gone through a lot. His family has uh, suffered. He's in financial distress. We've set up a GoFund 
me site called uh, michaelcohentruth.com, yeah. and we're hoping that right. people who want him to tell the truth about Donald Trump will contribute to that site. We have a lot more coming mm -hmm. up on this. Uh, Mr. Lanny Davis, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Very thank much. you for joining us.